Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel and a huge video for you today on growth stocks in that fintech theme. Nation, digital wallet customers could be worth as much as $20,000 each for fintech stocks, more than 10 times the stock valuation today. Digital payment users could double by 2025 and change how we think about banking. That data is from the ARK Invest Big Ideas Report, a 112-page research report from Kathy Wood and the team over at ARK Funds on the 15 life-changing trends they're following. Now, I love this report. Tons of research here, but not so much on suggestions for which stocks to buy. For example, the first eight pages are on deep learning and the trend in artificial intelligence, but nothing on which companies are primed to take advantage of that phenomenon. So over the next few months, I'm gonna dig deep into these 15 disruptive trends, show you all that research, help you analyze it, and then reveal the top stocks to buy in each one. Make sure you join the community so you don't miss any of those videos because these are gonna be the stocks that you need in your portfolio over the next decade. Now, I'm not doing a big lead in for this video because I wanna get right into that topic, how digital wallets will change the way you think about banking and how to get in front of this trend with some of the fastest growing stocks in the space. Now, a digital wallet is really just another way of saying a totally online bank account and growth here is amazing. It took Square and PayPal just seven and 10 years to reach 60 million users. That's less than a third of the time it took JP Morgan when it started back in the 90s. And ARK believes that digital wallet users could more than double in the next few years, reaching 230 million by 2025, just in the United States alone. Now, more than that growth in fintech stocks, though, is the potential change in valuation. On a per-user basis, Venmo and the Cash App are valued at just $250 to $700 for owners Square and PayPal. But that's just a fraction of the nearly $20,000 each customer could be worth. In fact, right now, PayPal's Venmo unit is estimated to be worth just $13 to $15 billion. That's a fraction of the $331 billion market cap for the company. But if the company were able to optimize those users to that full $20,000 potential, Venmo alone could be worth more than a trillion dollars. That's three times the stock value for all of PayPal right now, and it could all happen in the next few years. And that $20,000 estimate comes from the ability to cross-sell users into everything financial for these fintech companies to become a one-stop for banking, investing, lending, and even credit. And you see in this chart, the finance side alone of that business would be worth over $10,000 a customer, but that next level of expanding into e-commerce doubles the valuation. I'll be using the Webull app to research our five stocks. And besides those research tools that I'll show you, I love this stock simulator on the app. Webull gives you a million dollars in a paper portfolio to track your stocks and test your strategies before you invest your own money. I've been using the app for over two years now, and it's a great feature. So I'll leave a link to Webull in the video description below. Make sure you check that out because there's still time to take advantage of their prize wheel promotion. Webull has extended this promotion to March 1st and added a thousand shares of Google to the pool on top of shares of GE, Southwestern Energy, and Facebook. You can get up to 21 additional spins after opening an account and sharing on social media. And I did the math on the probability for getting each stock because I'm nerd like that. And it turns out that each spin is worth about $10, not including the value of these advanced prizes. Besides those chances to spin the wheel, you'll also get the four free shares of stock that Webull gives you just for signing up and making your first deposit. Look, I know a lot of you are diehard Robinhood users or on some other platform. Hell, I've got accounts on seven different sites, but do not miss this opportunity to get the free money when you can. A few free spins and those four free stocks and you're easily talking about $100 or more in stock, an instant return on your money. First year is by far the smallest of the group at just $2.1 billion. Bottom Line Technologies, ticker EPAY. Now, Bottom Line is a leader in the cloud-based business payments market, so not the consumer payment side that we're talking about, but I think a great undiscovered play in the theme. The business serves more than 10,000 corporate customers in 92 countries, including 60 of the Fortune 100 companies. Management estimates the addressable market as high as $25 billion, and with the company at just $450 million in annual revenue, that leaves a tremendous opportunity for growth in this fragmented market. The shares traded about 40 times earnings, which are expected 2% higher next year, though management almost always beats those expectations. Now, analysts have an average target here of nearly $55 a share, which is 18% above the current price. And even this low estimate for the analyst targets is above where the shares are trading at now. 
I actually think this one makes for a great takeover target as a bank or, or maybe even one of these consumer digital wallet companies that we'll talk about wants to expand into that business services space. Next here is Square. Ticker SQ is one of the two undisputed leaders in digital wallets with its cash app, but also has a strong seller payment system that accounts for 75% of its gross profits. Now, the seller platform enables any size business to optimize its sales and finances, and management is estimating a $160 million addressable market with just these two segments. But I think it's hugely underestimating that because they're not even yet modeling for that all-in-one financial services opportunity that we're talking about. Gross profit has grown at an amazing 40% annualized pace over the last five years, and you can see that cash app segment growing at 134% in 2019 is still just 25% of those profits. And now if we look back at this research by ARK Invest, they're estimating that the cash app valuation is at $700 per user, or about 42 billion of the company's $116 billion market cap. Now just imagine if it reached a valuation of even $10,000 for each of its 60 million users. That would mean that the cash app alone would be worth more than $600 billion, or six times the stock's current value. The company grew earnings by 70% in 2019 and is on pace to beat expectations for last year's profits as well. Analysts here have an average price target of $224 a share, about a 13% below the current price, but this one is one the market is underestimating over the next few years. We've still got three more fintech stocks to highlight in that digital payments theme, but I wanna get your opinion on this. Do you think it's better to invest in those smaller startups like Bottomline or the more established fintech companies like Square? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below, do you want those bigger potential in the smaller names or maybe a little more certainty in the leaders? Intuit, ticker INTU, is one that I think very few people are watching right now, but just made a huge deal to acquire consumer credit company Credit Karma. The acquisition puts it in the lead for this kind of holistic financial services idea in fintech, so even if the digital wallet platform isn't as well developed as maybe Square or PayPal, I think Intuit is further along in getting the most out of each user, and that user base just doubled in this acquisition to more than 200 million customers. The company also gets an AI platform parsing more than 8 billion data points a day, which is gonna be golden for being able to offer up those right services at the right time to all these customers. Management estimates a $248 billion market between small business, self-employed, and consumer. Revenue grew by 13% last year with earnings up 16%, which were both well over expectations. Now this year, the market is expecting earnings up 6% to $8.35 a share, but with management's record for beating those expectations, I think this one gets to $8.65 a share or higher. Now the average analyst target is just above the current price here, about 5% higher, but as with most of these, I think the real return is going to be further out a few years into that potential growth. You cannot talk about digital payments without talking about PayPal, ticker PYPL, with 377 million active accounts, up 24% in the last year alone, and revenue up 21% to $21.5 billion. PayPal has that scale to beat all of these to the prize. And part of the reason why I like PayPal here, besides that scale and the valuation that we'll look at next, it's constantly adding services that bring more people in. From the QR code program that's gonna be putting in from that point of sale space to Venmo and crypto, which in less than three months after rolling it out, over two thirds of PayPal users had used that crypto service. The company has the financial power to develop or acquire anything it needs to grow. The company generated over $5 billion in free cash flow last year, an increase of 48% from the year before, and its payment volume growth in the fourth quarter was the highest on record. But again, this the real potential here is in that Venmo app with nearly 70 million users and accounting for just $17.5 billion of the company's $331 billion market cap. Now, even on that modest $10,000 valuation per user, the Venmo segment would add another $683 billion to this market cap, to this stock, tripling the stock price. Now, obviously, the market isn't yet giving it credit for that, with an average analyst target of just $290 per share, though there is a target as high as $375 on the high side. Now, earnings are expected to grow 17% this year, so even if we have to wait a few years on this to reach that full potential, I think this one is a solid performer while we wait. Alibaba, ticker BABA, has one thing that none of these others have, the 1.4 billion person Chinese market. The host of companies here serve more than a billion users, up 140 million just in the last year to June. 
And I know there's a lot of fear over the recent government attention, but the company amounts to 18% of the total retail sales in the country. China is right to take a look at the company's power, but it's a significant part of the economy and a strong brand, so the government isn't trying to shut it down, just exert some oversight. And in all fairness here, Amazon amounts to just 5% of US retail sales and is also getting attention from the US government, so, so you can imagine if it was more than three times as large. Alibaba sales are growing at a 34% pace. It's a significant driver for the economy, and the government isn't going to want to get into the way of that. Analysts expect earnings to jump 39% this year to $10.39 a share, and this is why I own over 20 grand in the shares. That puts it at a valuation of just 25 times on the price to earnings basis. That's almost a third as much as the 69 times PE ratio where Amazon is trading at right now. And Alibaba books faster growth. Analyst estimates are for a 21% return to an average of $323 per share over the next year. But this is a long-term hold for me because I think it goes much higher than that. Don't forget to get your free shares on Webull and spin that prize wheel with the link in the description below. Click on the video to the right for how I use that stock simulator to test out all my strategies. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.